Welcome to Thrive Endurance Everyday Athlete, where we delve into the minds of regular people, how they juggle the balance of everyday life while trying to reach their endurance dreams. I'm your host, Jason Shields, and this episode is brought to you by Thrive Endurance. Hi guys, welcome to episode two of Thrive Endurance Everyday Athlete. Um, today we're very, very lucky to have a, a special guest. Um, she's one of Thrive Endurance's very own super mums. Um, she's also the Australasian Skyrunner champion for 2019, which due to the COVID-19 and the race not going ahead has also means that she is still in the 2020 um, Australasian champion. So yeah, without any further ado, I'd just like to introduce uh, super mum herself, Beth Cladingbowl from Echuca. And hi, Beck. Welcome to episode two of Everyday Athlete. Um, we're pretty excited to get to talk to you today when I'd, uh, I kind of think that this Everyday Athlete concept, you know, you were nearly the person that come straight into my mind that I had to interview, but then it was like, uh, when am I going to be able to get her to fit in time to, um, <laughs> to do this? So, you know, basically, um, you know, I think we met about, three and a half years ago at a Chuka Tri Club training session that was organised by um, by the club. And you had just maybe completed your first triathlon, maybe. I, I remember you did challenge Shep, just the sprint distance. Um, and you sort of come along from there. And, you know, since then I've seen you, you know, you've, you've gone through the whole things of sprint distances, Olympic distances, you know, to half Ironmans and, and, you know, potentially thinking about Ironmans and, and all trail running and all this kind of stuff. So um, basically I know Beck from three years onwards, um, but, you know, I'd like just a, a little bit of an introduction as to, you know, what, what you did in the past. Did you play sports? You know, those sort of things back, you know, pre-Jason, pre-Thrive Endurance time. Yeah. Um, hello. So... Um, yeah, I was a, I was a uh, netballer, I suppose I would um, have called myself that well prior to that. Um, I suppose, like, growing up, life revolved around sport. Um, as, you do, as you do growing up in a small community, that sort of was your option um, and that was your sort of your social connection was to um, be involved in, um, in sport. So I, you know, I lived for the weekends um, of playing netball and I, so I suppose I started that at about um, 10 and I, so through winter we'd play netball every weekend and um, basketball was on a Friday night through through summer. And that's really sort of um, like the, the main, the, that's pretty much what we did. Um, I did swimming lessons, like swam until I could, I could swim, but um, yeah, it was mainly just, yeah, definitely a netball. I, I always ran, like I ran, um, I suppose from around 14 onwards, like I'd run um, if I wasn't netball training, I'd go. I'd go for a run. But um, yeah, that's sort of where it. Yeah, what I've been up was to. That, was that running more because you had a love for running then, or because you thought, oh, I'm going to go run so I can get fitter, so I can play netball? You know. What? No. Well, well, like I suppose we'll um, jump to the. So um, when I lost my brother when I was 14, that was sort of my coping mechanism. I used that to to cope and. Um, I had to find something because obviously when you're a teenager, you don't talk about stuff much. So I, I'd run. Um, and so I just sort of started running because it made me feel better, um, more so than anything. Like, and I suppose you, when you, you know, you're a teenager going through all those motions of, yeah, you want to be fitter as well. Um, but yeah, sort of use that as a, as a coping mechanism. So I sort of, um, as well being fitter for netball, like I was quite a, a reasonable netballer on the court too. So that, that, um, but. I was sort of already okay at that prior to, to running. So I sort of, yeah, running then sort of took off a little bit more in a, um, but I do it most days. So I was sort of, and I was just doing the basic, just going for a run to, so, you know, you, you feel good um, rather than, you know, doing, I was definitely not doing any um, specific training sessions or anything. Yeah, just running. Yeah, but before, yeah. Were, before you started triathlon like three and a half, four years ago, mm. you, you were doing a bit more running as in running, then weren't you but, you know you sort of did you yeah, start, yeah 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 or, or were you just still just running um or were I you... was still just running um I was still just running like every now and then I would enter like maybe the you know the sweat versus steam you know trigger like a 5k um 
never really anything more than a 5K. Like I remember one extreme day, it must have been when I was maybe um, 24, 22 maybe, I thought I had run all the way from Rochester to Nanila, which was 13 Ks, and that was like yeah, massive. Like I thought that was like the longest run. Why would you run that far? That was huge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from like, yeah, I, and I sort of kept on. I think I, I was trying to think back as to, I played netball till I was 29, and I think um, in that same last year of netball, I also ran a marathon. Yeah. Um, and I realised that they were completely different sports. Um, and I struggled through that marathon. Um, yeah, to, and I realised that, oh, I think I need to... I, life got... You know, I had a baby and life got a bit tricky and I kind of then decided, oh, I really probably should choose um, here. Like it was... Yeah, you'd have to... The training hours got longer for a marathon, like to, although I probably didn't prepare well, but um, training got a little bit more with running and, yeah, I sort of went, oh, I need to choose here. I, you know, I'm interrupting a lot of family time and a lot of... Yeah, I, then I sort of made a choice that... Um, and also, like, 29, I was playing against 16-year-olds and I could never recover from a netball game and, game and then think I could go out and run three days later. Like, I was just yeah. struggling to recover properly from a really intense, sharp sport um, and playing at that level to, yeah, to try and run as well. So I sort of, yeah, made a bit of a choice. And so what, yeah. what, what age were you when you ended up having kids? Was it about that 29? Um, 20, no, 24. So I was 24. 24. And, 20, I was a baby, having a baby at 24. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then it wasn't until I, I then I had Ivy when I was 27. So I was quite young fitting in this sort of stuff with a career and, um, and yeah, sort of, um, oh, actually it was, then my, my father passed away when I was 20, uh, 28. And then sort of that was actually the day after his funeral, I, um, signed myself up for 10 kilometers in Wangaratta and, it kind of went off on from there, really, because I saw myself up and I thought, oh, I'm going to do this 10K. You know, he always loved watching me play sport and, and run and he was always never not at um, my training. Like, he'd sit through netball training and he'd always, you know, ride his bike next to me when I was running back when I was younger. So um, I thought, right, I'm going to do this for him. And I, I didn't really train and I think I did it in 42 minutes and I went, oh, actually, I'm not too bad at this. Maybe I'll do a little bit more. Like, I thought, oh, well, actually, and everyone kept on saying, wow, that was pretty good time. What did you do for training? And I was like, oh, well, actually, nothing really because I'd been nursing him for, like, because he um, had cancer, I'd been nursing him for the last month. And and prior to that, I'd, you know, still breastfeeding a child and just, you know, yeah. so I thought, oh, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, so it kind of sort of stemmed on for that, from that, so, yeah. Like, I actually think that most, um, you know, I don't know whether I'd say most good endurance athletes, but most most endurance athletes or whatever, they all most have a life changing moment story that yeah. this is the reason that I tried it, and and then in the end that you know they yeah. got obsessed with it. It's not it's not just a something you, you just fall across. Or you know, I mean, I know for myself, um, you know, I, I I dabbled in running, like I played football as a football. I played every other sport, but you know, I did some running and. Stuff. Mm. And it wasn't until the doctor told me that the alcohol that I was drinking, because I thought I was fit, <laughs> you know, it didn't matter that I was drinking because I was yeah. compensating it. And, you know, and that was my life-changing mm. moment when the, the doctor said to me that, oh, so you're going to have brains with no, no muscles with no brains. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Mm. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of like most people yeah. have this life-changing moment. Um, but oh, I'm not like... An, yeah. an, I really don't know anything about this because I don't have any kids. Um, I'm very, like, I, I kind of say, I'm, it's kind of, I think I'm like a, a drug cheat because I say it's like, you know, not having kids is like being on performance enhancing drugs because you can just do whatever you need oh, to do. <laughs> like how You can you sleep. Much yeah, 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 you know, and, and I train when I decide to train, not when my kids decide that they're mm -hmm. not doing something, then I can train. Like how do you juggle a you know a life of having a family having a job and being you know a high a high-end endurance athlete yeah so like i suppose i call it invisible training um so i get up you probably noticed most of my trainings are early super early in the morning and i try and do it like with least interruption to the families so that sort of means like you know, 5.30 in the morning I go, I get up and I try and get most of my stuff in the morning done by 7 because, um, you know, that I've got kids to get ready for school and lunch boxes to pack and myself to get ready and often I'll start work at 8am. So, 
um, yeah, it's got like, and the kids often will say to me the night before, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, they're interested, but they, they don't realise I've done it. Um, and it's sort of, so I'm like, oh, good, that didn't interrupt them. And, um, and you probably notice too, like I quiz you often and say, oh, I want to do an Ironman, but how many hours? Like, so I'm not worried about how long it's going to take me to do it. I'm more worried about feeling guilty and yeah, yeah. how that's interrupt my family life and how that's, I don't want to miss out on them either. Um, and so, yeah, trying to just juggle it around. And look, it's, it's worked so, like, so far. I, you know, there are times where the kids have been out on a long bike ride and got home at 10 o'clock and the kids are like, oh, we've already you know, had breakfast. And, you know, you sort of miss out on little bits. But um, I think as long as you, you just have to play, like the night before you have to be organised, like you have to plan. And I've got a very tight schedule um, with work and life and kids and <laughs> training. Um, but yeah, it, you can, you can do it. And, and you know what? A lot of people say to me, I don't know how you fit that in. And I'm thinking, well, you might knit for two hours. Like I don't want to knit for two hours. I'd rather sit on my bike and train. And, um, yeah, so people choose what to do with their time. And you sort of, if you want to do something, you can fit it, you can fit it in. Yeah. yeah. I get, like, a, you know, from, from the people, like, you know, I've coached a lot of different people over the times and generally mm. the people that have the least amount of time, Get the most amount done and, and and you know to my own like you know i've at, at several points in my life when i've gone and blocked off three months and i've gone away to go training i generally don't get any more done than what i do when i don't because you can just sit around and procrastinate and, and watch facebook yeah. and, and scroll and stream uh, and all this stuff that you don't need to do where i think sometimes when you actually have a schedule and it's like i have to do it now or i miss it yeah it's like you do it if you go, oh, I can do it in yeah. two hours, you just procrastinate for two hours. And, and, you know, sometimes that does your head in even more because you've got to think about the actual think about doing it. Yeah, you can't just, yeah. like, go bang, it's yeah. got to happen. Well, when the alarm goes off in the mornings, like, I can't go, oh, I'll do it later because I don't have time later. Like, I've yeah. got kids to get to swimming club and, like, I don't, I don't always have time to do, it, to do it later. So you sort of, it's either now or how much do you want this, like, whatever you're training for and... You know, you, and the driver, I suppose you don't always have to be motivated, but you kind of need to always be disciplined, like, yeah. yeah, and I'm not always motivated. I don't know how many people are motivated when their alarm goes up at quarter past five, but if you want something enough and you want it and you're, and you're passionate about it enough, you'll just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, Motivation yeah. only lasts four weeks. No, Maximum. it does. It doesn't even last yeah. four weeks. It's, it's, you know, it's discipline, it's passion, it's determination. It's all these things to do it when you don't feel yeah. like doing it that actually make the difference. Anyone can yeah. do anything when they're motivated. They just, you know, and that's what, you know, yeah. you always, and I'm assuming you would hear the same thing. It's like everyone must go, oh, I just wish I had your motivation. I just wish I was as motivated yeah. as you. I just, it's like, that's got nothing to, like, it's just like, I just want it. You want it, so yeah. that's what gets you out of bed. It's not the Absolutely. motivation that gets you out of bed. It's the feeling. It's all the time, yeah. yeah. Um, all the time. So just the other one, you know, with your family life, it's um, that I, you know, I think you also help out with your mum a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So my mum, um, she has cerebral palsy, so she, um, she and so she was born with that, so her legs don't work um, very well. So um, yeah, my dad, my dad was her carer, and um, oh well, his partner, but carer. Yeah, and so when he passed away, that kind of that job, um, me being the only. Um, person left um, was yeah and and absolutely wouldn't change it for the world so but I'm her carer as well so yeah I um, squeeze that that into my <laughs> so um, you, I as well. really do feel like I'm on performance enhancing drugs compared to you uh, just being selfish yeah. and being able to live my own yeah. my own life and, 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 like, you know, yeah. and that's what you know it is it's the biggest thing that I always see with the people that I coach it's the people that have got you know that have the most to fit in Generally, the ones mm-hmm. that get that structure, they just get everything done. Um, it's it's quite yeah, it's quite remarkable. And and for me, it's like I don't like I'm busy. I I take on a lot of stuff, but it's all stuff yeah. because it's work or it's hobby or it's a you know it's not because you have to do it. Yeah, if I decide to, oh, I could give this up today if I wanted to. Yeah, you know, mm. give up being a mum. No, <laughs> no. So- like squeezing her appointments around as well. And I have to, like, they're things I have to do because, you know, she needs to do that stuff as well and I'm the only one to take her. So you kind of just go, okay, well, what am I going to move to shift where? And you just kind of, it kind of works. Like I've got lots of friends um, and a good community around me too. So, like, if I need someone to help me with the kids, there's always someone. Like you just have to, you have to work out what your priorities are. Um, 
yeah, and it's sort of I've like um, haven't missed any train like trainings in particular, really. No, so, no, but um, and it, and it's a little bit like you know if if you give someone a you know, I, I would say you're the classic example of you're someone you could just give a training plan because they do exactly what you're going to tell them to do and they always like so then that's easy but if you're someone yeah. else that just you know needs a coach more than a training plan because they miss stuff or they do extras like it's just yeah. you know it's not so easy it's you know so yeah, yeah I, I would love to have all people like like Beck just the right yeah. training plan well stuff. I find it easier if you like with you giving me my training plan because I can I don't have to think about that I don't have to think about what I have to do I just do what you say and so that's one less I suppose prior I would say oh what am I going to do today and what am I going to do in the pool and how am I going to do it and at least that just takes away one little task that I have to do each day and each week as to think what I'm going to do I've already got it there so I, that that's like one less pressure to worry about what I'm doing because someone's telling me yeah, yeah. So you basically, at about 29, you did your first 10K run, you started to fall in love with running, you started running, yeah. you have your own little run group of, of girls. How did triathlon then come into this run group? Because, like, <laughs> yeah, your little run thing, because none of the, like, I don't think many of the girls in your run group, I think other people were really involved in triathlon. So what was the draw? How did you get involved in triathlon to start with? Yeah, so um, I did have some friends that I work with that are in um, triathlons. So that's sort of another little group of friends. Um, but really, like, uh, so um, Atuka's triathlon is massive. Like, um, yeah, and, and the, the team thing's huge. So, of course, everyone needed, needs a runner. Um, and so I think, <laughs> I can't even remember how long, but I was always a runner in the team. Um, in, a, in a team and actually this is another life-changing. Um, I think it was about a month before my father passed away. Um, in the January, she passed away in February. So in the January try, he come down with me, dragged himself. He was so unwell. We got to the race because he never really missed anything. And he said to me while he was waiting for me, oh, my God, Rebecca, next time you just have to do this all by yourself because you'd be so much faster and we'd, I'd be gone home already because you would have finished. And I said, oh, don't be silly. Like, I, I don't know. I, um, I can't swim. Can't. And he's like, of course you can. You can do all of that. You'll, you'll, you'll do really well at this. And I kind of thought, oh, okay, whatever. Like, you're sick. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I sort of sat, he passed away and then I just sat on it and I sat on it. And I think, um, yeah, it took me a little while to go. Um, I spoke to my friends about it and I talked to them like, oh, what's the go with this triathlon thing? They, I think a friend had done a half iron man in Shepparton and I'd quiz her lots and I'd like to know what I'm doing before I do it. So, um, yeah, I think it was maybe 2015. Um, Nick bought me a bike because I, talk, I talked about it and talked about it. Anyway, he bought me a road bike and a new pair of bathers and I thought two weeks later, right, I'm going to join the tri club. So I did a, um, walk down to the, yeah, um, the tri club and um, two weeks later I did the January race um, and, yes, yeah, so that's sort of where it all started. And I think the um, the tri clubs just so, like, I got there and I knew nothing because I was petrified about all these transitions and what are you talking about and what do you mean, do you, like, how do you get from the from being wet in the water to on your bike and with your shoes and do you dry your feet and do you wear socks? And, like, I had so many questions because I like to, I'm such a, I don't like too many surprises yeah. um, and I like to be prepared. So, yeah, I guess that's, um, so that's sort of where it all started, yeah. 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 And then, so, I mean, obviously the Chica Tri Club, from what I've seen of them, are, you know, it's a pretty amazing group of people that, um, yeah, yeah. And, and especially I think it's a lot of it, it's a little bit like a summer sport, like, you know, they pack it up and they put it away in the winter, like there is no yeah. ongoing training sessions, it's, there is just the Wednesday night race, which... I think it's easier to tell someone to pull out of an A race than it is to tell someone to not go to their Wednesday night <laughs> training session. I, Absolutely. You know, been, I have been involved with a fair few people on that uh, that are you know involved with the Chica Tri Club, and and I'm not a super fan of everyone like racing a super <laughs> short race every weekend, but it's just like that's just what you have to deal with. It's like you yeah compared to the culture that you know that a lot of clubs have, or we definitely have. It's like oh, the short race is just for beginners. That's not for, you know, oh, I've done an Ironman. I'm not going to, you know, it's, there, there is just none of that. Yeah. It's, it's like it's, it's pretty remarkable culture that has been built yeah. through that club. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, um, yeah. Oh, I'm on the committee now and, um, yeah, just and it's just the people. Just because you didn't have any 
fair oh, yeah. <laughs> to uh, and, the, and the race director of the <laughs> swim. But anyway, like I, um, yeah, it's just the people. Like they're the most um, caring, kind, like compassionate people. Like they're not just you. Sort of don't go. You have a bit of banter, and they know all about you. And it's sort of it's such a fun um, group of people to be around and supportive. And I think like they're the people that have like that's sort of why I'm sitting where I am because there's they've all they've, some of them a lot of them have done Ironmans and a lot of them have done half and uh, um, seventy point threes and a lot of like they've all got different stories to tell and. Um, and they've all got different experiences and, um, yeah, so it's just that I think it's this, this social, really, the, and the banter they, you know, that, that comes of a, who's handicapped what and, yeah. That's a yeah. great thing that they've got about the, the club. It's, it's not, um, you know, in a lot of groups or clubs or whatever, it's like that no one wants someone else to be better than them. It's always the, the jealousy. Yeah. And it's like I'm not going to race just in case I don't win. And you know, you always have all yeah. these. And I don't know whether it's because of the model that they use with the handicap race, and so everyone has a mm-hmm. chance to win. So it's not like you are all starting from scratch, and this person wins every week. And yeah. you know, it's maybe it's that, but it's just yeah, it's a pretty remarkable. Like I know at Chef, we all have all these people mm-hmm. sit there and watch because no one wants to someone else to beat them and or to see a secret training or. Or something like that. It's it's pretty yeah. great. Um, so I remember. I think it you know it was a, a couple of weeks that, you know before Yarrawonga, probably two and a half years ago or something. I think you contacted me for the first time, and you know with your I think you'd been doing triathlon for a year, and you know with your grand scheme of I want to qualify for Gold Coast. Do you think this is this is possible? <laughs> and um, you know to be to be a hundred percent fair, I was like yes. <laughs> she um. I'd be, you know, this is, you know, there's always people around that you go, oh, I'd love to work with this person or to be helpful with, this, you know, this person. And I'm like, oh, no, yeah, this is, you know, and I go, yeah, I think you've got a good chance. But, you know, at that point to qualify for Gold Coast, it was like trying to qualify for Kona because everyone in Australia, because it was in Australia, wanted to the, to go to the Gold Coast. But we sat down and we kind of made a plan. We did a little bit different to what everyone else were. We didn't go to the races for the biggest points. We went for the races you know, like you went to South Australia, I think, because we went, Lullabar was on for the same weekend, the double yeah. points. Did we go to double points where all the good people go? Or, you know, and I think at the end of the day, if we had gone to Lullabar, you still would have got about the points that you um, probably got at South Australia anyway. But yeah. early on in the stage, we didn't probably realise that, holy crap, you're going to be, you know, easily qualified for this race, um, you know, sort of thing. So, you mm. know, that was my first sort of, Thing of you as in the triathlon, I'd seen that you know people had told me, "Oh, this girl runs amazing," but you know, I, I thought, "Oh, but you need to be able to swim, ride, and and run." But you know, you really um you really dug in, and by the time you got there, you know, your run was oh, your bike, sorry, was as good as most of the girls that were that were riding around. Mm. Um, you know, so obviously your dad was right, <laughs> and he did when he did say, "You'll be able to swim, and you'll be able to ride, and you'll be able to run." Um, yeah, you know, so that was that was yep. a, a pretty impressive, um, you know, step up into the sport. But I, I think was it straight after Gold Coast that um, I think it was two weeks after that you might have said, "Oh, I think I'm going to do Challenge Challenge Shepparton." I think it was the the same year. Yeah, that you... I did. Noosa. I did Noosa. I did Noosa the weekend before Challenge Shep. Yeah. Um, and I was talking up after because I yeah, got this ticket. Everyone was doing Noosa, and I thought, oh, I've got to, I've got to be amongst this. Um, so I did, I did Noosa, and then after the Noosa race, I kind of was um, toying with the idea of yeah. doing. And it was a weekend after, so I was, I think it was the, I'm pretty sure it was a weekend after, or maybe it was the. But anyway, yeah, um, no, I think, so I hadn't really decided. Yeah, it was the, it was, it was like I think in my mind after you did Gold Coast, you were doing Challenge Shepherd. And, and then it was kind of like, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to give her the training plan that I think that she needs to do to do Challenge Shepherd. And, and your, in your goal was you were going to Noosa and I was like, and then I think two days later you said, oh, I think I'm going to do Challenge Shepherd. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, that's exactly what I thought you were going to do too. Um, so, you know, you stepped straight. You tricked me. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a, oh, I've been riding that long. I may as well do a half. Um, <laughs> Now. Yeah, but, but, but saying that, I was pretty confident that for you to step up in the distances that, you know, the, the longer you went, the better you, you know, the better the results that you were 
that you were going to have because the mm. longer you drag it out, you have a big engine. Um, you know, the longer you drag a big engine out, the more people that blow up along the way and then the more success that you're going to have hunting people and running people down. So, you know, you think when you've stepped up in distance that it's, you know, that suits your style or? Yeah, I, like definitely. I, I feel like, yeah, my I feel like, <laughs> well, the longer it gets, it, like compared to the standard distance and the 70.3, like the swim was... Um, not yeah, the swim was so long in the a standard distance compared to the it was wasn't that much further. And, but the bike was a lot. I was much stronger on the bike in the run, so I knew that that was probably going to suit me better. But I definitely think endurance like is my thing. Like I'm I'm quite happy. I'd rather um, be out there for hours a long a longer time than a shorter time. And yeah, definitely I can't. I kind of always thought that 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 would suit me. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I've, yeah, I think I enjoy it probably more as well. Yeah, yeah, and mm. and I still think that the uh, the Ironman is the distance that will even even be the extreme <laughs> again if we ever go down that path, which which you did look at, you know, potentially doing. Um, I think it might have been later than last December we were looking at, you know, semi penciled in to do to do Bustleton before you, um, mm. you know, probably you, you got a little bit injured, so. You know, that, that potentially is a is another thing down down the track. Um, you know, for your yeah, for your triathlon. But probably and I don't so before triathlon, were you in had you done many trail running? Or was it like you just did running um, and then you started triathlon? Because, you know, in the end now, like trail running has like you've you know, is is the it's kind of like the number one thing, but it's the number two thing, but is it the number three? Like it's you know, a little bit of a, yeah, it's a little bit complex. Yeah. Um, so trail, I'm just trying to think back. I've probably maybe six years, um, I'm trying to think when I first did my, I, it was a Buffalo Stampede, was my first trail run. Um, and um, it was my mate Jim Avard who I've um, was run, running with in a, in the running group um, prior to uh, to myself starting triathlon. So yeah, it must have been. Um, and I remember he sort of said to me one day oh, after the marathon, actually, oh, you haven't done a, um, a run until you've ran um, up these um, up this in this trail race. And I thought, oh yeah, how hard could that be? Um, so actually it was just before I did my marathon. That's right. I was marathon training and, and I remember the, um, so I signed up for this 26 kilometre Buffalo stampede and I thought, oh, this sounds great. Um, anyway, so, um, my, Nick and I went for a, my husband went for a, um, a drive and Nick said, oh, I'm pretty sure the track will go up there. And I said, oh, don't be stupid. No, that you can't run up that. Like that is the side of the mountain. Like, don't be stupid. That's no way. Anyway, so the next day I line up and it's nice and flat to start with. And of course, like straight up the top of this mountain at this point these arrows were pointing and I'm like you are kidding like I have not trained for this I I think I'd only ran 16k thinking I'll be right for 26 um and it was hell and then there were fires so that actually changed the course so instead of being 26 it was now 32 kilometers um and it was the it was torture um, I thought, no way, I am never doing this again. I, in the middle of the race, I was like, oh my god, this has got to be over. Like, but you kept on, like me being me. There's no way I've got all these. I can block pain out. I can. I've got all these ways to dig myself out of darkness. <laughs> so I was digging myself out. And anyway, I got to the end of the race, and Nick said, oh, how was it? And I said, oh my god. Never again. But anyway, I've signed up every other year since. There was something so, about it. Never again is code <laughs> for I am entering. It's, it, I'm it's sorry. translates in a different yeah. language to I am going to do this again because, um, you know, that's, yeah. generally the, that's generally what they, when the person crosses the line, they say never again and then one week later they're like, oh, I've got to sign up for this. Yeah. I've got to beat it. I've got to, I've got a thing. So, yeah. So, like, my, my first experience with you and, and trail running was, I think, was the, the marathon at Buffalo Stampede, and that was that was you know the mm. year that basically you tried to qualify for Gold Coast. Um, so you know your whole run training was basically pretty much tri specific. You know a lot of bike mm. work because you were a good runner, so it was like you know we need to get you up on the bike. And I think you actually might have raced the Gatorade at, at um, St Kilda the weekend before, or two mm. was, might have only been two weekends. Yeah. Oh, so, I think it was a weekend. 
before, actually. I think I it, it might have been the weekend. weekend. I'm pretty sure it was the weekend. It, before. it wasn't far, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and so, you know, you went into that race, a marathon, hadn't done any, you know, any trail running, mm. you know, thing, like a lot of bike work and, you know, maybe some short, sharp intervals, but no specific trial running at all and and i'm pretty confident that you went in that you were you first female over the line in that marathon oh no i think i was i might have been third yeah. um i might have been third i didn't i didn't win that um i won the year before the 26er so i reckon oh no i come second the 26er but yeah i think that year i yeah maybe third maybe even fourth yeah. um yeah that um, I still had a, a very, like, my time was, actually, that was the year Kelly Emerson um, was there as well. So, like, she's a, um elite trail runner. There were some great names that year. But, yeah, like, I was still proud of the effort. Yeah, yeah, like, it was still good, good time. But what you had done and not any... Yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of, I think, you know, I think, you know, I was a little bit... You know, I think people with triathlon or the bike, regardless of, you know, if you're just a runner and you're trying to get in volume and, and you know, build up an aerobic engine and stuff and you're trying to do that all on your legs running, I believe that's, a, you know, it's a, you know, it's a hard job to stay injury free. Um, you know, where I think, mm. you, you know, I think people, especially runners, you know, don't think riding is going to help them that much. I think especially in the, in the form of trail running, because trail running just being able to do stuff on tired legs. You know, it's like, you know, having your legs tired and then still being able to climb that mountain, climb that thing. You're not running with pure mm. great form. And, you know, it's different to running a marathon or a half marathon. Even though I've only done one yeah. 21K and it wasn't, um, wasn't in any things. But I've tried to walk up some hills that were, that were pretty crazy. But I think, I think trail runners themselves could actually get a lot out of, you know, out of adding in some CrossFit cycling or that sort of stuff on the bike to try and build up some more k's and some more hours and and that not just pound and pound and pound away the pavement or the hills or, or whatever what, what yeah. are your thoughts with that yeah like I, I was actually thinking about this one when I, I was climbing up a mountain one day and i thought gee like um just the strength training on the bike like you're using your quads and you're hammering them and you know you're getting stronger and more consistent and and i kind of that's sort of what it's like when you're climbing up a mountain on tight like your, your quads are really um you're, you're working hard like you and you're right with that like the loading um that you get from repetitive running like i think being able to change it up and get on a bike and and cycle um yeah like definitely i would um attribute a lot of my good um outcomes on the mountains was because i've been riding as well like and adding that um yeah you can do definitely do some really good stuff on the bike in preparation for a mountain um a mountain race yeah 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 uh, like i'm a i'm a hundred percent a believer of that i think mm. um, so i think after you did that that buffalo you went to and you did uh, your first 50k uta race or the ultra trials australia ultra trial. Yeah, which, which you said was not as hard as the forty-two k oh. at, at at Buffalo. Flat. <laughs> Much flatter. It was yeah. So, but oh, the mountains in in Bright, they're just something about them. They're so technical and torturous. There, <laughs> it's like you're climbing. It's hard to describe until you get there. But the 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 I mean, you it's, you're getting up some really steep climbs, and then coming down is just like you either. You, if you put your foot in a in on a softer soil, like you just slide, um, and it's really quite technical and really hard. Whereas um, the ultra trail in the Blue Mountains, there's lots of like man-made, like you've got steps and you've got um, yeah, it's a lot lots of man-made trails. But I suppose it's a walking track. Whereas this, like someone in Bright, you you wouldn't walk, like you wouldn't by choice walk up the side of it. <laughs> well, I would, but many wouldn't um, walk up the side of a mountain of that terrain like you're sort of um crawling up some of it because it's so it's quite steep and it's not it's just sort of like loose rock um and loose dirt like yeah whereas in yeah definitely in the blue mountains it's more um man-made so it's you you know you've got they've carved in steps and all they've they've got wooden planks on them walking straight yeah so it's quite it's definitely more runnable um and i think the elevation of that wasn't yeah anywhere near what the elevation and the toughness was out 
um, in bright for the Buffalo Stampede races. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, after after you did them, you, I mean, you went to the Gold Coast, you continued on, you did a half, your first half Ironman, you went to Geelong, you did another half Ironman, you know, so you, your attention was still around a bit more focused on triathlon and stuff, and then you went into, you entered the Buffalo Stampede, the full one, I think it's the full one, that's the 84 game. Yeah. Um, but still... Yeah. Oh, it's... What's that, sorry? Yeah. 75k but it's oh, yeah, it yeah. comes out at 78 because they trick us as well it's 78 78 but it's it's um advertised as 75 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but but yeah. still like your you know you had a, a whole lead in of triathlon semi like base riding swimming going yeah. into that you sort of i think you finished geelong and then you might have had six weeks or something like that leading in to the buffalo which i remember you you then went and did a few trips over to Bright and, you know, we did a lot of hiking and, you know, not a lot mm. of probably, I don't think we did any big runs over two hours. I think you might have done some big hikes that were three hours or something like that. Um, but, you know, no big yeah. run, any bigger than a two hour, two and hour 20 run mm. itself. Um, you know, and then, you know, you went in and, you know, you end up taking it out the overall victory in that race, which gave you, was it the Sky Runner? Australasian champion or something? Um, yeah, um, Oceana um, Sky Running Ultra Champion or, yeah, something on those lines. Yeah. yeah. Which, which then, you know, which then in turn, um, you know, gave you a spot to go to the championship race that was yeah. supposedly meant to be this year in, in Europe, which obviously for reasons everyone understands is is not going ahead and, and that the Buffalo didn't go ahead this year, so you still are the... The Australasian, yes. <laughs> so so you know you lose one, but you still get to gain to gain the there's, other. There's still still the lining. <laughs> yeah, but but saying that, like it with that race, you know, it was a big eye. Like you know, no one knew who Beck Cladingold mm. was um, before that yeah. race, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get an attention. Everyone knows who Beck Cladingold is, and and that sort of stuff. You're on. You're on top of the world. You feel like you, know, like you, like you should be, like anyone would be. You know, you're mm. feeling invincible. I've just done all these races. Mm. I want to, you know. And then you had a, a little bit of downtime, but then you did. You plan to do a, a 100k race in like October or something? Was it? Yeah. So it was a Hounslow Classic. So it was a. Um, oh, I can't remember. It was maybe 68 kilometers. Um, in um in the blue mountains yeah yeah so that's what i got so i got um when i did the buffalo stampede they gave me um a free entry into this hounslow classic and i thought oh i'll just do it like that'll that sounds yep i'm i'm sure i'll be good at doing that too so i'll i'll have a crack and i'll um yeah so that's sort of um yeah it was didn't end up but yeah that's what i was aiming towards yeah, yeah but, but uh, like i think it's the potential little bit of the thing where like you know maybe i'm sort of going well you know when we you were a lot focused on the bike and the swim and all that to gain a lot of the hours mm -hmm. of training that you're doing to get your aerobic engine fitness to then all of a sudden you, you know you had a really good result in, in buffalo and then you sort of then started to draw your attention to trail running because you go oh well i have to do more trail running to get better at trail running where yeah. then all of a sudden you know you you did it the buffalo i think 21 k's which yeah the um, yeah the bright run yeah, yeah four yeah. weeks before the race and and i'm yeah. not a big person that likes the race before i do a race because racing just isn't the same it's like you know and even i knew you said to me oh yeah you know, i'm just going to take it easy i'm like bullshit <laughs> you might think you're going to take it easy but that stress you're going to put on your body is not when you race you know it's not the same like i I remember when you're doing the Buffalo Stampede and I think you were at about 60 Ks or something and, and Nick messaged me and, you know, and he's going, oh, I think, you know, she's five minutes in front or how many minutes in front and, and the other girl and I just go to her, I go, she will not lose now. I said, she's like me. She's got a sniff, mate, and the other girl's starting to hurt. She will hurt more because, you know, you, that's, that's the mentality of what winners have. Like once you actually start, you hurt until someone else is hurting more than you, then your pain goes away. You know, sort of oh, yeah, sort of. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then so I was like, as soon as you do this race, you're not going to like you will feel like you're holding back, but it'll be as fast nearly as you can go because 
okay, you might be the girls, but you want to be boys then. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's a thing. And then this was, I think, maybe a week or two weeks after this that, you know, you initially got, you know, where you started to go running and, oh, I think of something's wrong, something's not right here. Um, you know, what, what, mm. what sort of went down there? Yeah, so you're right. I uh, didn't hold back and I tried to beat the boys, but I didn't. Um, and definitely didn't hold back. And then, so I did the 24K and then Nick was out doing the 50K. So I thought I, and I really was desperately wanting to join him. So I did this probably too intense 20 5k or whatever it was and then um, went back to join Nick for the last maybe 14k so as you could imagine probably the biggest day out I'd had in a long time um, with lots of hours and then I got up the next day and I thought yep I'm going to go up and down Mystic again um, yep I'm invincible <laughs> like I um, nothing can happen now surely anyway so it was probably a week after that and I got this like deep groin pain and like yeah, I know I sort of know my body now and I kind of gone oh that's kind of not right that's a bit unusual um couldn't stretch it out couldn't i couldn't really i couldn't i've been a physio i was kind of going through all the possibilities and oh, it'll be okay and i just wanted to get right for this race that i had been putting all these hours into and um anyway i went to another physio and he's like oh Beck, i think you've got a stress fracture and i was like no i can't have a straight like i you know, I, I, it couldn't be like, a, yeah, anyway, so of course went to the MRI and surely enough it was a uh, um, stress fracture on my neck of femur, which was sort of a compression type of obviously the mountains um, and coming down, lots of impact um, in a short space of time. And then we looked at my training, you, you know, the physios did, you know, look through my training and went, yeah, you've spiked it a bit too much like and um and i thought i was doing the right thing you know you think you're doing the right thing because you feel fine at the time and obviously um like your bone is tissue as well and it needs to cope with loads and i think being a female and there was lots of you know i'm mid-30s now and um lots of things like things go downhill with your um recovery and, and your bone strength and so i sort of had to you know I went for blood tests and um just to see what like why and I kind of knew why I knew I'd overloaded it um but I you thought oh maybe there was another reason but no it was purely um yeah and I suppose looking back now yeah I did like I I could nearly but at the time I sort of blocked that out I didn't want to know about it um and now like I look back and go yeah I, like I did I went I probably did too much like I you know didn't really respect my body i kind of just thought no i'm i'll be fine i'll keep training i'll keep running up and down these crazy mountains and i'll be fine but yeah there is a point <laughs> where that's a bit too much um yeah so that sort of it become a long journey back actually because i was then had to um because i was actually like it was a stress reaction so not a fracture so if i had fractured that it would have been like a non-weight bearing period for maybe three months like it was more intense and I was so lucky that it was just it was it was like so lucky it was just a, a bone stress um reaction rather than like any fracture lines so um and you know that it can quickly go from like a, a stress reaction to like a, a fracture where you need surgery and you know that's a really important place and whenever um every bone whenever I talk to other physios they're like oh my god that is probably the worst injury you could ever get for a runner um the neck of femur like if you if you fracture that you you you're in big trouble um so yeah I suppose I've learned I've learned lots from that like uh, yeah and you're right like I'm had done so well um with all these other races not not spending so much like a loading's important um but i think um it was a repetitive loading i think i'm i'm loading it now but differently with weights and more controlled and differently and deliberately um yeah so it's a little bit yeah so and, yeah, I, and I, think, of, I think probably the biggest key to the to the whole problem was mm -hmm. you know, and i think you know maybe we could look at the the loading of what went into it or whatever but i think mm. that that adding that 26k race on top of the like that and then that pushing 20 percent harder than you had in any of the the training would have been a big a big factor into that because mm. generally when you when you race and this is why i'm a big fan myself personally of just have a races anything else is not a race if you go there it's not a race you just go there because generally after a big race, if you potentially, and this might have been right, but if you had just had three weeks off after that, 
you know, after that buffalo, you probably yeah. would have ended up with the stress reaction. It's just that you did that stress and then, and, and to me, it just, was a little bit like, oh, my God, maybe this girl is invincible. Maybe she can't, like, you know, some people are really lucky, you know, not lucky, but, you know, they've done the work and they've got really good muscle structure and, they, you know, they are, other people just, you look at them and they break and they fall apart. You know, so I was, I was a little bit in the thing going, you know, starting to doubt myself because, like, man, I'm not like this girl. I would have broken. I would have broken. And I think that's my biggest advantage that I've had, which is the biggest disadvantage I've had, is how many times that I've broken. But from doing that, I've learned that this is what you need to do. So going forward, it's now you, you, know, you have some run girls. I don't know whether you actually coach any of them or, or what it is or you just run in a group or what the – the go is, but I'm sure that now you've actually gives you a bit more of a perspective on, you know, what you should be telling people to do or not to do. Even if you're not coaching them, if you're seeing someone doing this repeatedly over and over again, you're like going, I just, you've got to stop. Yeah, exactly. And, and even like um, people say to me, oh my God, do you run every day? And I'm like, actually, no, I only run three times a week. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? And then I say, well, actually, like, and tell them, what I do and I say then I've realized now that it's not ideal to run um, more than what your body probably can cope with because um, this is what this is what happens um, but yeah like I've definitely learned you know the, the injury just wasn't the injury it was like I yeah had a running group I've got a running group that I run with and they're just a, a group of girls that um, some I give advice to and and and, and just really do the company and we're, we're good friends and we have you know a good chat while we're out there running and we're all there for the same reason but I lost that social connection like I couldn't run for I've sort of only well I just started back so I've been six months without that um, connection so if running is your outlet and running is your you need to be really smart about how you do it and you don't want to be broken all the time because that's when things become really hard like you're not there's always a reason why someone runs like and and I found myself like um, the coping mechanism for life in general like so, um, the stress of work or the stress of family or whatever it is like you might run for those other reasons as well and I suppose when you start overdoing when you start overdoing it and then you can't run like then things become really difficult um, so I suppose yeah it's it's about being do, doing the right training um, so you can run forever um, yeah. rather than go and smash yourself and you're out for so long yeah yeah. Well, it's the, it's the um, you know, I see it, you know, not so much hopefully in the people that I work with, but in outside people, I just, you know, it's the inconsistency because they miss two weeks. So then, because they had a niggle, so then they think, oh, now I've got to run 60 Ks this week because I didn't do the two lots of 30 k And so they do, you know, and it's always about, they're always thinking about the one key session, not the three years of key sessions week after week after week after day after day after day after day that can get you there because if you are inconsistent and you're up and down you 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 are losing fitness faster than you're gaining fitness and you know and the classic example is someone will just run 4k's too far and then they won't run for two weeks you know you would have been better off not even doing that one run and running for the two weeks you know and you know you would have been better off missing one 20k run than and being able to do 30 k's for two weeks in a row than running 24 k's and not running for two weeks but just people just don't a lot of people they just don't understand that um understand that philosophy or or they're just you know generally we are all just so highly motivated to mm. um to run and, and and a lot of the time i always i always have the conversation someone will come to me and they'll go oh i want to do this um and i'm so motivated and i'm like Generally, motivation isn't the problem for most people that want to do endurance sports. It's being mm -hmm. able to control and balance that motivation to be consistent mm -hmm. that gets you the results. Not the, yeah. you know, I'm determined, give me the biggest and hardest program that's going to break me, you know, sort mm -hmm. of thing. That, that we yeah, want. I suppose it's about that discipline as well. Like there's been a few runs that I've done recently um, with your math training. I'm thinking I could just keep going right now. But then I know it's like, oh, hang on a second. I've got, I've got a long run and I, I remember you've just come back from an injury and let's just be, let's do what you're told for, you know, do, be disciplined. Like I think it's more to do more about that as well, like being able to control and, and plan like what you're going to do. You can't just get out there and run every day sort of aimlessly um, and then increase it aimlessly as well. Like it's, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Like, I mean, uh, for anyone out there, it's like the safest rule of thumb is under 10%. Don't ever yep. do more than the, never increase anything by, you know, and it's not the, but if you do do that, you know, your risk and chances are a lot better, you know, to, um, then, you know, go on 20 Ks, 30 Ks, 40 Ks, 50 Ks a week. That's, that's mm. 20, 30% increases your likelihood that you're going to continue that progression. It's not, um, you know, it's not that high, but even saying that, you know, you, you went through, you had this really big, you know, you won this race, you're the Australasian <laughs> champion, this is all motivating, you know, you, you've got this big build into this race that you've been given for free. And then I know that the UTA 100K race this year was going to fall on the passing of your brother's 20th, yes. 20th was it? 20th yeah, 20th anniversary, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't just this, This you had this no. amazing <laughs> year to then like you had this it was more than just a race like you know there was they were talking about you were gonna run some kind of a charity thing with mm. friends like it was it was a bigger deal than just a 100k race yeah yeah it was and and that was tough because yeah then yeah you, when especially when you got so much meaning on something and you lose that as well like it's the you know you feel guilty and you feel like you've let them down and um, so yeah, did, like that was pretty huge, and I think to have to deal with that as well on top of an injury, and then to go, oh shit, I'm not going to be able to run a hundred k. So then I sort of dropped it down to, okay, at the start of the year, righto, I'm going to aim for fifty, um, and then I kind of was getting closer and going, shit, I don't think I'm going to be able to run fifty, um, and then like uh, as much as a bit self um, selfish in my respect, but I was actually kind of like, Oh my God, the pressure is now gone. Like when the race was cancelled, um, like there was so much loss about that race um, emotionally. Um, and, but then I thought, you know what, my brother would be just happy that I'm okay. Like he's happy that I could be able to run. He'd be happy that um, I was planning on doing that. And you know what, it's okay. Sometimes shit doesn't go your way. Like it, you know, I've lo- I haven't been able to control a lot of things in my life, and you sort of learn how to um, adapt to those anyway. Like you sort of you have to look at all the positives because if you don't look at the positives, well, you know you're screwed really. So you have to keep on. And so there was a positive like for me in that that um, yes, it, it doesn't change. You know, it doesn't change who I am or um, whatever. But it also was like I don't have that pressure now. Um, to have to run 50 k's and that you know that was a little bit selfish but on the other hand I thought you know what he'd be so happy that I was going to do that anyway so yeah I suppose there was a lots of like there's lots of grief around that but there was also a, a silver lining and you know what he there's always next year and I think um, I looked, really looked at next year's day to the 100k and it falls just I think um, maybe the day before or the day after so you know what 23rd that's 21 it's just as important as 20 like it's all important so yeah I think um, it, yeah that sort of moving forward I suppose that's a mindset yeah, yeah. and I think um, yeah you took a pretty you know like I, like I remember you contacted me maybe I don't know when it was January or February in the lead up to it and, you know, and you've gone and like, and, you know, and ever since you've been injured, you've been just doing your own thing, you've been doing your own rehab. But I think yeah. you were still pretty smart because rather than letting emotion make a decision on oh, what yeah. you're supposed to do, you were like, oh, look, this is the scenario. I'm meant to be doing this 100K race. You know, what, you know, do you think I can do it? And I, I think I was pretty much going, I think I said straight back to you, well, no one knows what a 100K race is. Everyone thinks 50K is crazy. Yeah, you know, so you don't have to do a hundred k's to make a crate. Like you know, and, and anyone that's going to support you, if you did a ten k race, they're going to support. Like you know, it's you know, it's kind of yeah. thing. But you kind of the biggest problem with most athletes, as well, especially you know, self coached, anyone that's not a professional athlete or whatever. That you know, a lot of the times, and whether it's a coach or just a mentor or someone that you know, like I kind of know what I'm doing but I still have someone else give me guidance on what to do because mm-hmm. we always make stupid decisions that we would never make with someone else with ourselves. Like you knew that if someone asked you that question, you go, nah, that's no. not, that's not <laughs> yeah. a good idea. But for you, you're emotionally attached to that decision. So mm-hmm. you know, it was a, like, I believe it was a smart move to, you know, you went, all right, 
like, you know, I'm going to get some outside opinion here on, you know, I really know, I just need someone else to tell me, you can't do that. Don't yeah. be stupid. Um, you know, sort of mm. thing. And, 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 you know, you as a, you'll be a mentor of your run girls or whatever. So, you know, you need, like, they all, you know, everyone kind of needs that person to tell them to pull their head in. We're not unbreakable. We are, you know, we do need to do this. We do need to, mm. to do that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I think it was a, because it was way more than just the race. It was, uh, yeah. you know, there was, there was the injuries. There was your brother. There was like, you know, it, it, yeah. and you had gone from this massive high to thinking I'm invincible to whole 12 months of nothing, nearly, you know, sort of yeah. thing in the, mm. in the lead in. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got, we've had a pretty good background on what you've done and, you know, the highs and the lows, especially that you've had in the last two years. Um, where do you mm. see yourself heading now into the future? Um, you know, what, like, what would you like to see happen if your body was great? You know, do you see yourself wanting to head towards the trail runs, the tries to both, you know, the combinations? Like, what, what, where do you see back in another 12 months' time or another two years? Um, yeah, um, I actually don't really know. <laughs> Um, I'm and still not, not, like, not in isolation. <laughs> and I know, and I'm thinking, gosh, well, it'll probably be cancelled anyway. So um, this year, I don't, and, and the problem is, it's so uncertain as to what is going to go ahead for the rest of the year and what is not. Um, so at this at this stage, I had um, I deferred. Oh no! Well, so my 50k ticket that I had for the Blue Mountains in May has now been moved to October. Um, oh. So. I yeah, yeah. So I'm. That is the plan. Um, because I had no, seen them, them trying to sell yeah. the tickets or whatever online, and I'm like, um, the race has been like. Well, I didn't know that they had um that they, yeah. had, so you, they had taken another yes. day. Yeah, they had, you had a choice. You could defer it for twelve months. Um, and I had a 50k ticket, and I'm thinking, nah, I'm gonna do the 100k. And um, or you could um, you could just get it moved to a date. It's at the end of October. So I just thought, you know what, let just let it. And if I, I can always sell the ticket, like I haven't really, that, that's sort of a goal at the minute, like it's something, um, yeah, to work towards. But, yeah, at the end of the day, there's always people looking for UTA tickets, like it is massive race and there's, you'll always, um, yeah, you'll always sell that. But, yeah, so that's sort of the plan at the moment. Um, and, yeah, I think going forward, like, I, I de yeah, I'd like to see, I'd like to do 100K. Um, I'd still like to do that. Um, I like the idea of the longer longer distance. Um, um, from what I've heard, like if I can do the if I can do the Buffalo Stampede Ultra, I can definitely do the hundred k over there. So I'm pretty keen to see what I can um, achieve over there. But um, and I think an Iron like I still have my heart set on one day doing an Ironman, um, probably in the next two years. Like. Yeah, and I and now um after talking to you a few times about how much more do I have to train to fit in with my family, like I think it would be achievable. Um, yeah, so I suppose well, that's I think like, that that's the that's the biggest misconception, I think. Yeah, any yeah. any distance whatsoever, you know, it's mm. it's like someone thinks if they do a sprint triathlon and they train ten hours a week, to do an Olympic they have to train 10 to do a half Ironman they have to train 20 and to do an Ironman they have yeah. to train 40 like if the reality is, is that most of us train as much as we can train mm. and, and and then the reality is for you to go from a half you know that you are training as much as you possibly can for to mm. a full it's like the only thing you have to do extra because you generally can't run any further. Like for me as a wide coach, I don't like I, two hours is where I like to cap people out. I don't care whether the race, like for you, when you won Buffalo Stampede, well, capping you at two hours and and how long did that? Yeah. You know, how long did that race take you to to finish? Eleven it? hours. Eleven yeah. hours, Eleven. and you'd never yeah. ran at more than two hours. It just same with me. I didn't run more than two hours when I did Ultraman, and I then yeah. come out negative split a double marathon. Like it's just. It's the volume of, you know, it's just week after week after week after fatigue. Mm -hmm. Running two hours after three months of training is not the same as running two hours fresh. You know, so, it, and that's the, um, yeah. you know, that's what I think is the, the biggest misconception and what most people get wrong is they go and do too much because they, they see it's double the distance. Like, you know, 
and they'll have their race a month before the race, like you kind of did at, at what's name, but they'll generally, you know, they'll be going to do a marathon, so they'll want to go run a marathon before a month before the marathon to prove that they can run a marathon. Generally, if you run a marathon, you ran your marathon. You can't run a marathon every month, um, you know, kind of thing. So, you know, that, and, 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 and even what you did in your lead-ups to, you know, your half on, like, you know, you couldn't have fit it any more vault like time no. in might have just been that you had to take an hour from this session and make it here at this point but you couldn't do any more you yeah. this is the amount of time that you give me how do you maximize yeah. that time and you might have to rearrange it that you know instead of mm. doing four rides you do three rides but one of them's longer or something or you do a double ride or or whatever it is to fit around the thing but it's not about just more is better um yeah yeah, so, that's why it's your job. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, sounds and, and, that, and that's like, you know, I, I like the sounds of the, you know, you go, oh, that's a thing in your, your next two years because I, like, I, you know, I think you'll, uh, I think you'll, you'll have really good, you know, result success, whether really good result success is win or whether it's finish and you're really happy. That, that's irrelevant. But I think mm. that, you know, I think that you are built to, to do that. And I think, after these injuries and all this whole thing that's happened to you in the last 12 months, I think you'll have, and this is what's happened to me three times, you know, 12 months mm. wipe out, but this is the difference between motivation and determination and discipline and what you want. Cause if you just motivated, you will have given up running by now. You know, after yeah, the exactly. 12 months that you've been through, you won't be coming back. But when <laughs> they take it away from you and you, when you're determined and disciplined and, all as you can think about is how can I do, like how can I get back to do it again? Um, yeah, and I just think that yeah. just feeds that inner tiger. It's take something away from someone. It's, it's a bit like now that people in the UK who don't walk, they say you can't go outside. Everyone wants to go and walk. <laughs> when you're allowed to walk, no one wants to walk. Um, yeah, sort of thing. So I think we're in a little bit of that world now. So hopefully exercise and fitness and this other stuff that we just take for granted now is, mm -hmm. um, you know, people, you know, increase into the future and and enjoy you know and get out mm -hmm. and, and be healthier um than mm. what we have been in the in the past so yeah yeah that's right and you get to run with your girls again yeah that's right i'm happy i've got my social life back again <laughs> which yeah. is in the mornings at 5 5 30 6 a.m so yeah that's yeah i'm pretty 5 30 in the dark in the zero degrees temperature of yeah. the winter, in the middle of winter and you know and everyone's excited that we can do it again Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah, so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a little bit disappointed, though, that your biggest number one goal for the future wasn't the math marathon in in four weeks' time. Like, I thought that would be, you know, the number one key in, in your future for the, for the thing. But, well, um, no. I, I, I thought oh, that would be good. And I thought, oh, 42. <laughs> nah, nah, that's a bit far. <laughs> I mean, that'd be all right. Yeah. No, I thought I'd be better with the team. Yeah, 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 team cutting yeah. ball. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and 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 with Jim. So yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So, all right. Well, I think that's been excellent, Beck. I think you need to go and pick up your kids because I have taken up your allocated time slot that um that we could get this week. So um yeah, thanks thanks heaps for coming on, having a chat. As I said, I think you are the everyday athlete that we are you know that we're trying to think we're not we're not professionals we're not things we just do this because we love it fitting it in when we can and and just that's enjoy, right just enjoying yeah. life and staying fit so yeah oh it's look out we have one <laughs> there we are the <laughs> one, at, one, at, one, at, one at school and one at home so it's uh, <laughs> ah! i know i was waiting the alarm's gone off this has been very good. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah. what Netflix can do. <laughs> He's hungry or thirsty now, so it's, it's time. Excellent. Right. Thanks, Thank uh, you. Thanks for coming bye. on. See you back. Bye. Thanks for listening to Thrive Endurance Everyday Athlete. Don't forget to like or subscribe to all of our social media pages, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and also check out our website for our services we offer and all of our training plans. Until next time, keep thriving. Thank you.